I mean, you guys see Bezos. He's jacked. He looks great. I think that's just all weights. Bezos, Dr. Yeah. Ryan. So, Bezos, we, we know uh, about him a little bit, I but mean, we're not going to say names. Huge fan of the All In podcast. They opine on so many different topics uh, regarding Silicon Valley, venture capital. The people in the All In podcast are, Chamath, he's, like a, he's an early employee at Facebook, and he uh, leveraged that to become a venture capitalist at Social Capital, and eventually an owner of uh, Golden Sea Warners. And now he's uh, predominantly kind of managing his own portfolio. There's an angel investor named Jason Kalanakis. He's interesting because he kind of has a blue collar attitude. Jason was one of the early investors into Uber. There's another individual named Dave Freeberg, kind of a biotech guy, expert. And then there's a personal favorite, David Sachs, who was the co-founder of Yammer and used to be part of the PayPal Mafia. When you come out for it, it is something else. They're pretty interesting individuals and they have like a unique perspective on the world because they're world beaters and they've done some pretty amazing things. But sometimes like, they get into this situation or they get into areas that are not their, not their power alleys, right? Did you just finish a good cry? Because you have this wetness right here on your eye. Oh, sorry. I just got out of my cold plunge in my sauna because, you know, I hit a new record low weight, 169 this week. Oh, oh hold on. I got to get my weights. And then I went in my infrared sauna. So now I've been going in. And you boom. do the cold, then the warm. I think you're supposed to do warm, then cold, no? They say end on uh, cold. And so End I've been on ending cold. on yeah, cold. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you been tracking your blood pr pressure? I have not, uh, but I have this uh, executive health coach that I'm using. That's where I got those ridiculous glasses, the blue lights, so my sleep's better. I've taken some supplements. Estrogen. <laughs> <laughs> so, Are you taking the estrogen, bro? For Dr. Ryan, would it ever make sense for a guy to take estrogen or progesterone, right? I think in certain cases, progesterone might be helpful, but it's very, very rare. It can sometimes help with people that have extreme anxiety or sleeping disorders. I don't use it a lot though in guys. I use it a lot in females and man, it helps with sleep tremendously. No, it turns out, you know, even at 52, my testosterone is very high. So that's What good. is your free testosterone? I don't have the number here, but they said it's the, the high end of normal. I've had a couple of my friends in their early 60s start H, is it HGH? Human growth, yeah. Is, is that right? Not a good idea. It seems like a really bad idea. That off-menu stuff, I don't think it's a good idea. No, I think you can get a prescription for it. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I know there's I a lot of off-menu items available to affluent people with the right doctors, and I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, you guys see Bezos. He's jacked. He looks great. I think that's just all weights. Bezos, Dr. Yeah. Ryan. So, Bezos, we, we know uh, about him a little bit, I but mean, I'm not going to say names. But. I, I don't know if he's admitted okay. to it, but... It's all natural. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, we have like this running a running joke when I was in bodybuilding competitions. Uh, there was this funny YouTube video where this bodybuilder who was dressed like a cow and advertising lunch meats uh, was, you know, <laughs> purporting that he's all natural. Let, let's just pull that up for a second. So my family's looking for beef that's all natural and hormone free. That's me, all natural. He's, he's definitely not all natural. Definitely not all natural. Because <laughs> I don't want hormones in my kids. That would be bad. Yeah, hormones in your kids would be bad. Are you taking growth hormones? That's ridiculous. Because there's a needle in your hunch. 100% he's taking growth hormones. 100%. That's not mine. <laughs> So this lady obviously is skeptical that this man is all natural, right? That he's very well built. What about um, Jeff Bezos? So Jeff Bezos is uh, almost 60 years old. This guy doesn't look like a typical 60 year old with a six pack and nice deltoids and big arms and a big chest. He could be one of those 1% elite dudes that uh, looks amazing in their old age, but usually most of these guys are uh, collegiate athletes. I don't think Jeff was a collegiate athlete. In my very uh, biased opinion, I think he's probably on TRT and maybe he's on growth hormone. The thing is, it's funny is because like they're trying to say it's taboo, right? And I used to think the same thing about that. I mean, human growth hormone has been used 
for a long periods of time in in Hollywood and along with many wealthy individuals because of one thing it it works you look younger your skin looks better increase muscle mass or decrease adipose tissue we know these things because we treat children with it for example here is an article looking at the safety of growth hormone treatment in GH deficient children and adults treated for cancer there is a concern about growth hormone safety in individuals and as we know it's been used in many adults <laughs> wealthy adults for a long time adult actors etc we know Stallone was using it he was caught with it Suzanne Summers has been pretty public about her use the concern that people have is well am i going to get cancer if i get on growth hormone therapy this this was a great article that actually looked at individuals that had to be on growth hormone for long periods of time because their pituitary was removed right and they need growth hormone uh, supplementation and if you listen to the naysayers about growth hormone all these children and adults who are taking growth hormone long term should you know have tons of cancer there really was like an increased risk of uh, certain cancers in many of these studies GH therapy probably not associated with tumor recurrence, no increased risk of medulloblastoma, glioma, or leukemia. These are cancers in the brain and in the blood. No increased risk of cancer, brain tumor recurrence after radiotherapy and GH therapy. I am still of the opinion if you have active cancer, probably don't get on growth hormone. Or, you know, if you've been treated, make sure it's completely in remission 100% and then ex be extremely careful with surveillance, I guess. Now, the issue, of course, is this. It is very hard to script growth hormone. And typically you have to look at IGF-1 levels and do a GH stimulation test and it's regulated. Not so much, I think, because of the side effects of growth hormone, but more so because of its prolific use in professional athletic world. I mean, oh my goodness, if you want to talk about hormones that can help you heal faster and grow bigger muscles and run faster and hit a ball far farther and catch a football and all these things. Yeah, it helps you recover really fast. I mean, I hate to admit this, but like I was just, I mean, I would, as a walk-on athlete in, in college, I mean, I was just trying to make it. I was really trying to make it. Back then there was something called CJC 1295 Ever on that, that was available. I think I was taking that ephedra, man, I was on a lot of stuff just to try to make it, right? And thankfully, didn't fail any drug tests, but I was just a walk on. And I still, I took it and I didn't really like, you know, make it to the, the top. Here's the sad thing about it, JD. It's really hard to test, right? Because if you keep your IGF-1 levels, they can be in a huge range for people naturally. So you can never really tell if someone's on growth hormone unless you look catch him with the vial injecting it in their sub <laughs> injecting it sub q it is difficult to catch someone taking it and it works and a lot of other people that you're competing against are on it you know i wasn't the only one to be on it but i think just wrapping it all up i think the four of uh, those guys are, are super smart and talented they probably all need to be like microdosing something if you look at uh, them and for chamath i actually actually met him a few times the most recent one was like, years ago at a 49ers game believe it or not at a box and he had a, he had his box and our firm at a time had ours and so i actually met him we were talking he's a super tall guy uh, incredibly skinny though right back then he was very very lean uh, but we were kind of talking about this LinkedIn thesis. So, Jamath, if you're watching this, uh, yeah, you owe me. But anyway, so we're talking th uh, that through, and he's a very, very nice guy, very humble, super kind guy. And um, all in podcasts is great in terms of like tech and VC and investing, but maybe not so much in terms of health and wellness, right? Mm -hmm.